the increase that you've seen in the gold price in the absence of any retail buying <laughs> in Western Europe and North America is testimony to the fact that global central banks reacting to the weaponization of the US dollar and not trusting each other on Monday to fulfill their obligations on Tuesday are seeing that they have no alternative but to increase their gold holdings, both as a store of value. You're watching Silver News Daily. Like this video and subscribe to the channel for the best news that you don't want to miss. Now let's get straight to it. Rick Rule, a seasoned investment analyst with a focus on natural resources, has recently shed light on the impending surge in silver prices, projecting an unprecedented increase to $1,528 by 2024. Rule's analysis is grounded in a comprehensive understanding of both macroeconomic factors and the silver market's intricacies. He highlights the unsustainable growth of federal debt in the U.S., which, according to the Congressional Budget Office, is on a trajectory to hit a record share of the economy by 2029. This looming fiscal challenge, combined with rising interest payments and an aging population, sets the stage for a rush towards silver as a reliable store of value. Rule points out that, despite past fluctuations in silver prices, the current economic environment, characterized by massive federal spending and a debased currency, is fundamentally different. The Federal Reserve's dovish stance with planned interest rate cuts only adds fuel to the fire, undermining the dollar's value and making silver an even more attractive investment. He also draws attention to the significant interest in precious metals from central banks globally, as they seek to diversify away from the dollar amidst geopolitical tensions and the weaponization of the U.S. currency. This global shift towards gold and silver, driven by a lack of trust in traditional financial systems and currencies, underscores Rule's bullish outlook on silver. Furthermore, Rule discusses the manipulation in the precious metals market, acknowledging short-term influences but dismissing the notion of a long-standing suppression of silver prices. He argues that the market's cyclical nature and the fundamental drivers of supply and demand will ultimately dictate silver's value. The increasing industrial demand for silver, coupled with its role as a monetary metal, positions it for a remarkable price increase. I would ask our president and our Congress how you add a column of negative numbers and come up with a positive sum. Um, <laughs> this can't be done. Um, I think that voters are confusing two words in English, one called liquidity and the other called solvency. I'm, of course, nervous about the fact that the on balance sheet liabilities of the U.S. are increasing at a rate of over $3 trillion a year. Uh, on top of the fact that existing uh, on balance sheet liabilities exceed 34 trillion or 27 trillion net. It's interesting that when we use the phrase a trillion, it isn't an accessible number to most people. Their eyes glaze over. It's incomprehensible. And as a consequence of that, they don't know what to make of it. And as a consequence of that, they don't seem to get scared. Um, what bothers me more, Dunnigan, uh, are the off-balance sheet liabilities, the net present value of entitlements, social care, so, social security, Medicare, Medicaid. In other words, me, 71-year-old uh, people who, uh, with the exception of me, are beginning to consume more than they produce. Uh, the combined liabilities of off-balance sheet and on-balance sheet are estimated by the Congressional Budget Office to exceed $150 trillion. Now, there's only two ways out of this. You can cut benefits really, really, really aggressively. Three ways, really. Uh, you can renounce your debts <laughs> or you can devalue the currency through inflation. My bet is some combination of the three, but focused on the third. Uh, all of those are unpleasant. And by the way, despite all this, I'm not a bear. <laughs> I'm long term, as you know, an extremely optimistic person. But getting from here to the future, I think there's a couple reckonings, a couple resets. And to the extent that your viewers can express concern about that, uh, it's because they did okay in arithmetic in school. Anybody who did okay in arithmetic 
is going to have a very difficult time reconciling the net present value of liabilities at $150 trillion being serviced by a budget that's in deficit $3 trillion a year. It does. Rick Rule emphasizes the importance of understanding the silver market's dual nature as both an industrial and a monetary metal. This unique characteristic is a critical factor driving the projected price surge to $1,528 by 2024. On the industrial side, silver's extensive use in electronics, solar panels, and medical applications underpins a steady demand that is likely to grow as technology advances and green energy solutions become more prevalent. The push towards renewable energy, particularly solar power, where silver is a key component in photovoltaic cells, highlights the metal's indispensable role in the global transition to sustainable energy sources. Concurrently, the monetary aspect of silver comes into play as economic uncertainties and inflation fears heighten. With central banks around the world diversifying their reserves and increasing their holdings in precious metals, silver's appeal is a hedge against currency devaluation and as a store of wealth grows. This dual demand sets a solid foundation for the silver market and distinguishes it from other commodities. Moreover, Rule points out that historical performance of silver during periods of high inflation and financial instability. He draws parallels between the current economic climate and past scenarios where silver prices experience significant gains. The combination of low real interest rates, expansive monetary policies, and fiscal challenges similar to those seen in the 1970s and early 2000s suggests a ripe environment for silver to thrive. Additionally, Rule addresses the concerns around market manipulation, underscoring that while short-term price fluctuations can occur due to various factors, the long-term value of silver is driven by fundamental market dynamics. The increasing recognition of silver as a safe haven investment, coupled with its industrial applications, supports a bullish outlook. When Social Security was instituted, uh, it maintains you at effectively poverty level at age 65, and the median life expectancy of an American male was 66 years. <laughs> And the working age population in the United States as a percentage of the total population was much greater than it is today. Now you have the aging baby boomers who are coming out of contributing, coming into consuming at the same time that the minimum Social Security age is 62 or in some cases 59 and a half. And the average life expectancy of an American male has gone from 65 years to 82 years. The actuarial assumptions are still based <laughs> on, <laughs> uh, on a median lifespan of 66 years, <laughs> when in fact it's 82 years, and they don't take into account the changing demographics of the contrib contributor community. Suffice it to say, on an actual – listen, I used to run or, or help run a public company called Sprott. If we tried to issue securities the same way that they try to sell Social Security to Americans – and we maintained a balance sheet and an income statement the way they do, I would be in prison. Uh, and people seem strangely unconcerned about this. Uh, people also, uh, when this interview is posted, there will be hostility uh, among the people discussing this because they will say, I paid into Social Security and I deserve my benefit. No, you have had your contributions stolen for 40 years and you have voted for the thief. Whether you voted Democrat or whether you voted Republican, you have voted for the thief. And the money that went into the Social Security Trust Fund was never invested. It was spent. It's the financial uh, equivalent of you borrowing from your IRA to go drinking on Friday night. Yes, you have an IOU from yourself to the IRA, but you have no way to fund it. So for the people who have, as a consequence of their own actions, uh, not prepared themselves for the fraud that they voted for for 40 years, I can genuinely say I'm sorry. But the fact that you paid into it uh, and the money was stolen doesn't detract from the reality that this is now a transfer payment from young people who are working to old people who are consuming. The fact is, Dunnigan, that my generation voted themselves all kinds of cool benefits and forgot to pay for them.
<laughs> and Rick Rule delves into the significance of the silver supply chain and its implications for the forecasted price surge to $1,528 by 2024. He highlights that silver mining is both capital-intensive and time-consuming, with new discoveries becoming increasingly rare and existing mines depleting. This inherent scarcity in the silver supply chain is a pivotal factor contributing to the metal's price potential. Rule explains that the majority of silver production is a byproduct of mining for other metals, such as copper, lead, and zinc. Therefore, the primary drivers of silver supply are not directly linked to the silver market itself, but are instead influenced by the demand and price dynamics of these other commodities. This unique aspect of silver production means that increases in silver demand, especially rapid or unexpected ones, can lead to supply constraints, as ramping up production is not straightforward or immediate. Rule points out that the current investment in exploration and development of new silver mines is insufficient to meet the forecasted demand growth, both from industrial applications and investment demand. The lag time between investment and exploration and the actual production of silver can be several years, creating a supply squeeze that can significantly impact prices. Furthermore, Rule addresses the environmental and regulatory challenges facing the mining industry, which add another layer of complexity to increasing silver supply. Stricter environmental regulations, social licensing issues, and geopolitical risks in key silver-producing countries can further restrict the ability to expand production quickly in response to rising demand. In light of these supply chain considerations, Rule argues that the market is underestimating the potential for a significant silver price rally. He believes that the combined effect of robust industrial demand, growing investment interest, and constrained supply dynamics will drive silver prices to unprecedented levels. Rule emphasizes that for investors understanding the nuances of the silver supply chain is crucial in appreciating why the price of silver is poised for a dramatic increase. He encourages investors to look beyond the immediate market conditions and consider the longer-term supply and demand trends that will shape the silver market's future. And slash property maybe, uh, to the extent that money flows out of the U.S. market and makes credit less available, uh, given that the real estate market is so credit dependent, uh, you might not find the same response to real estate that you've seen in prior markets. I'm not saying you will or you won't. Um, I disagree with the thesis that, uh, I mean, I do, I, I do agree that the U.S. dollar is becoming a less important trade mechanism than it was, but its former market share was 100%. <laughs> and while we are doing our very best as a country, to wreck our currency, uh, we're thus far unsuccessful because as idiotic as we are, we seem to be smarter than the foreigners. It is true that the Russians and the Saudis and the Persians and the Chinese and the Brazilians and the South Africans and all of these people are tired of being lectured by the morons in Washington. It is also true that the weaponization of the U.S. dollar has meant that increasingly people whose policies are at odds to American uh, policies want to find exchange mechanisms outside the U.S. dollar. My experience has done has been doing business internationally for 40 years. As much as they distrust us, they trust us more than they trust each other. And I would suspect that fears of, as an example, the BRICS currency uh, eclipsing the U.S. currency in my lifetime, I'm a very healthy 71-year-old, uh, are very, very, very overblown. The liquidity and the transparency and the depth of the U.S. dollar debt market uh, is so deep that my suspicion is whether other people like it or not, they're going to use it. Will the Russians occasionally uh, settle an oil and gas sale in Chinese renminbi. Yes, to the extent that they can turn around and spend that renminbi. Will the Russians acquire substantial amounts of renminbi uh, denominated debt? Or more importantly, will the Chinese add on very many 10-year ruble denominated notes? Almost certainly not. The increase that you've seen in the gold price in the absence of any retail buying <laughs> in Western Europe and North America is testimony to the fact that global central banks reacting to the weaponization of the U.S. dollar and not trusting each other on Monday to fulfill their obligations on Tuesday are seeing that they have no alternative 
but to increase their gold holdings, both as a store of value and as a medium of exchange. Rick Rule emphasizes the transformative role of technological advancements and environmental policies in driving the demand for silver, further bolstering the case for its price surge to $1,528 by 2024. He notes that the silver market is at the nexus of two powerful trends, the green energy revolution and the digitalization of the global economy. Both these megatrends require substantial amounts of silver due to its unmatched electrical conductivity, thermal conductivity, and antibacterial properties. On the green energy front, Rule points out that the global push towards reducing carbon emissions has led to significant investments in solar energy and electric vehicles, EVs, both of which rely heavily on silver. Solar panels use silver paste and photovoltaic cells to conduct electricity, and the rapid expansion of solar energy capacity worldwide is a major demand driver for silver. Similarly, electric vehicles, which use silver in various electrical connections and battery technologies, are gaining popularity as countries aim to phase out internal combustion engines. Rule highlights that these trends are not temporary. They represent a fundamental shift towards sustainable energy solutions, underpinned by government policies and technological innovation. Furthermore, the digitalization trend, accelerated by the COVID-19 pandemic, necessitates increased use of silver in electronics, telecommunications, and numerous other technological applications. From smartphones to laptops and advanced medical devices, silver's role is indispensable in enabling the functionality and reliability of these products. Rule also discusses the investment demand for silver, which he expects to grow as investors seek safe haven assets amidst monetary inflation and economic uncertainties. He believes that the intrinsic value of silver, coupled with its industrial demand, makes it an attractive investment compared to other assets. This investment demand is likely to be amplified by the advent of digital platforms and investment products that make it easier for a broader audience to invest in Depending silver. on individual circumstance, mix knocks. Uh, I mean, for me, if they lower the interest rate, uh, because I have access to credit and I'm a relatively good investor, it'll be a subsidy to me. You lower my cost of capital. I will use the capital to buy income streams that are increasing while the net present value of my obligation declines. For most people who are savers rather than investors, lowering the interest rate means that the capitalized value of their distributions of their savings goes down. So artificially low interest rates are a net benefit to old fat rich guys like me. Uh, and the cost is borne by middle America. Middle America believes that because their car payment goes down that they're better off not understanding that the negative yield on their savings provides a disincentive to save and negatively impacts their Rick retirement, discusses particularly the geopolitical when social landscape security and its implications uh, for the silver to market, reinforcing the thesis that silver prices could soar to $1,528 by 2024. He points out that geopolitical tensions, particularly between major economic powers, have historically led to increased demand for precious metals as safe haven assets. Rule emphasizes that the current geopolitical environment is fraught with uncertainties, including trade disputes, sanctions, and the realignment of global supply chains, all of which contribute to a sense of instability in the international financial system. Rule highlights the growing trend of de-dollarization among certain countries as they seek to reduce their reliance on the U.S. dollar in international trade and reserves. This shift is partly driven by concerns over the weaponization of the dollar through sanctions and trade policies. As countries look for alternatives to the dollar, precious metals, particularly silver, stand to benefit due to their intrinsic value in history as a medium of exchange. Moreover, Rule delves into the strategic importance of silver in various countries' industrial policies, especially those related to renewable energy and technological innovation. Nations that are aggressively pursuing solar energy projects and the development of high-tech industries are increasing their consumption of silver, further straining the global supply. The investor and analyst also addresses the role of central banks in the evolving precious metals landscape. He notes that several central banks have been increasing their gold and silver reserves as part of a broader diversification strategy away from fiat currencies. This trend underscores the growing recognition of silver's value, not just as an industrial metal, but also as a monetary asset. If they succeed in establishing uh, central bank digital currencies, uh, then there's no saving us. At least there's no saving us in a formal market. Uh, then the people who bought large quantities of junk silver <laughs> 
will have their revenge. <laughs> you, in that circumstance, won't be able to use a kilo bar because you won't be able to make change. The combination of a central bank digital currency with the social credit technology that the Chinese are employing today means that if the federal government didn't like the way that we speak, spoke in an interview or didn't like the drugs that we either bought or didn't buy, that they could in fact cancel our currency. <laughs> and this is truly scary. Mercifully, and this will get us some more hate in the comment in the comment section, there are 400 million guns in private circulation in the United States. Uh, and I don't think in the near term that Congress has the currency, has the courage uh, to do a wealth transfer of the order of magnitude that would be suggested by a central bank digital currency. I'm taking no chances, as a matter of fact. When I go into a restaurant and tip a waiter or a waitress, I tip them in cash and I tell them, this is not a tip, which is taxable. This is a gift, which is non-taxable. You should report this if you believe that the level of service that you get from the government exceeds the price that you pay for it in tax. Otherwise, you should regard this as a gift. I spend cash at small businesses because I want small businesses to understand the importance of tax, uh, of tax and cash in their business. In other words, I'm actively engaged as a propagandist by my own action against central bank digital currencies. Rick Rule explores the historical context of silver's role as both a currency and an industrial metal, providing a foundational understanding of why its value is likely to skyrocket to $1,000. $528 by 2024. He emphasizes that silver has been used as a form of money for thousands of years, underpinning its inherent value and trustworthiness as a store of wealth. This historical precedent is crucial, as it highlights silver's dual appeal, not only as an investment but also as a hedge against currency devaluation and economic instability. Rule points out that throughout history, during times of economic turmoil, wars, and currency debasements, Silver and gold have reasserted their roles as the ultimate forms of money. This resilience and enduring value make silver particularly appealing in today's uncertain economic climate, characterized by unprecedented levels of government debt, fiat currency creation, and concerns about the long-term viability of traditional financial systems. Furthermore, Rule delves into the periods of the silver standard, where silver served as the basis for many countries' monetary systems. He draws parallels between those times and the present arguing that the current environment of low to negative real interest rates, coupled with expansive monetary policies, sets the stage for a renewed appreciation for silver's monetary role. Rule also discusses the lessons learned from past silver bull markets, noting the factors that have historically led to significant price increases. These include supply constraints, technological advancements leading to new industrial uses for silver, and increased investment demand during times of inflation and currency devaluation. He emphasizes that these conditions are present today, perhaps to an even greater degree, given the advancements in renewable energy, electronics, and medical technologies that require silver. They have my address and I expect a knock. Um, Governor Grimsley, uh, my name for Governor Inslee, is a special kind of moron. Uh, he couldn't get uh, an income tax past the, the uh, Washington state voters and so he's proposed uh, an excise tax on income. <laughs> uh, he reminds me a lot of Governor Gruesome in California, who, finding every other way to deprive the state, has decided to have a wealth tax now. Uh, these people are very consistent. If it fails, subsidize it. Uh, if it succeeds, tax it. Uh, they're a particularly despicable breed. Uh, and they're, uh, I, I think, however, at the eclipse, at the pinnacle of their power. What you find in all aspects uh, of the world in investing in health and everything else, there's reversion to mean uh, and, and there are counter trends. And I suspect that the incredible popularity of Mr. Trump, who many of us find to be a reprehensible human being, uh, is the beginnings of the groundswell of a response to the uh, incredible acquisition of power that the progressives have enjoyed for the last 20 years. I'm very nervous about the direction that this 
uh, rebound might take, but I'm fairly confident that it will occur. He explains that investor sentiment towards precious metals, particularly silver, tends to oscillate between extreme optimism and pessimism, often driven by broader economic indicators, geopolitical events, and trends in the financial markets. Rule notes that during periods of economic uncertainty or inflationary pressures, investors' appetite for silver increases as they seek safe haven assets to protect their wealth. Rule emphasizes the importance of understanding the herd mentality that can dominate investment decisions. He points out that as more investors become aware of silver's potential in the current economic climate, a self-reinforcing cycle of increasing demand and rising prices is likely to emerge. This cycle can be further amplified by media coverage and analyst recommendations, which often lag the initial movement but contribute to broader investor awareness and interest. Moreover, Rule discusses the impact of social media and digital investment platforms on investor behavior and market dynamics. He observes that these platforms have democratized access to investment information and facilitated rapid dissemination of opinions and analysis, leading to quicker market reactions and, at times, heightened volatility. This modern investment landscape, Rule argues, could expedite the process of silver revaluation as information and sentiment spread more swiftly than in past markets. Rule also addresses the psychological impact of reaching and surpassing significant price milestones. He suggests that as silver approaches and breaches new highs, the psychological barrier for investors shifts, resetting expectations and potentially leading to a revaluation of silver's value ceiling. This phenomenon, known as price anchoring, can contribute to sustained momentum in a bull market. It's a manipulation. All markets are manipulated in the near term, gold being no exception. Markets as big as the LIBOR market uh, and the U.S. Treasury market are manipulated in the very near term. And they are always manipulated in the direction that it is the easiest for the manipulators to manipulate. Uh, when gold markets begin to rise, it will be easier to manipulate those markets up, which occurred in my memory in the 1970s. For the last 40 years, the easy way to manipulate them is down. Uh, when you have a market, and I think we've talked about this before, Dunnigan, where the futures market is so much larger than the physical market, the temptation to short-term manipulation is particularly intense. Uh, it is not uncommon for the silver futures markets to trade 200 times the volume of silver available for good delivery in a day. <laughs> so uh, a manipulator could establish a short ladder if he or she expected the silver price to be more likely to decline, a short ladder involving a billion or a billion and a half dollars uh, in stages from three months out to two years, uh, and then borrow a fair amount of physical, which they dumped in the overnight market when the volumes were the least and where the damage they could do was the most, uh, and then enjoy the change that they had affected in the spot market and its outsize impact in the futures market. Uh, and, and I think that happens probably on a quarterly basis. There's no other explanation for very large selling of gold and silver in the overnight markets when the volumes are the skinniest. Uh, a rational seller would be trying to maximize his or her yield on sale. In this particular instance, whoever the seller is, is trying to maximize their impact in the futures market. I would suggest that this is not the trilateral commission or the international Jewish conspiracy or the Fed. I would suspect that these are organized cabals around the trading desks of major international banks, the same people who manipulated the treasury market the same people who uh, manipulated the LIBOR market, the same people who manipulated the euro, the euro dollar. Rick Rule explores the impact of monetary policies and central bank actions on the silver market, emphasizing their significant role in the projected ascent of silver prices to $1,528 by 2024. He explains that the unprecedented levels of quantitative easing, low to negative interest rate policies, and fiscal stimulus measures undertaken by central banks worldwide have eroded the purchasing power of fiat currencies, making assets like silver more attractive to investors seeking to preserve their wealth. Rule highlights that the expansion of central bank balance sheets, 
particularly in the US, Europe, and Japan, has led to a massive increase in the money supply, fueling concerns about inflation and the devaluation of fiat currencies. This environment creates a fertile ground for silver, historically seen as a hedge against inflation and currency debasement, to thrive. Moreover, Rule discusses the psychological impact of central bank policies on investor behavior. He points out that as central banks signal their willingness to maintain accommodative monetary policies for an extended period, investors increasingly turn to precious metals as a means of hedging against the anticipated consequences of these policies, including higher inflation and weaker currencies. Rule also addresses the potential for ships and central bank policies to impact the silver market. He suggests that any indication of a move towards tighter monetary conditions or interest rate hikes could temporarily dampen investor enthusiasm for silver. However, he quickly adds that the underlying structural issues, such as high levels of debt and ongoing fiscal deficits, are likely to limit central banks' ability to significantly change course without triggering economic turmoil, thereby maintaining the long-term bullish case for silver. Well, if they've been patient for the last 12 years, they've been rewarded. Uh, I look back and I began to materially increase my own holdings uh, of gold in 1998, two years too quick. But if we go 2000 to 2024, we see a move in the gold price from $250 to $2,100, 8.6, 8.7% compounded a year for 24 years. I would ask investors who complain about that uh, to give their head a shake. Gold has done precisely what I asked it to do. It's maintained my purchasing power. So when the gentleman says he's being patient, I need to say, really? What were your expectations? <laughs> I, I'm not one of those who believes in any ongoing uh, multi-decade manipulation. I believe that uh, lower real and marginal gold and silver prices over 40 years had more to do with the strength of the U.S. dollar and the perception, at least, that savers were enjoying real interest yields on U.S. dollar-denominated deposits than anything else. Why would you bother manipulating something that was going lower? Uh, you know, why would you try to suppress something that was falling of its own volition? Uh, I believe that the outlook changed in 2022, when what I believe was the real rate of inflation began to substantially exceed the yield available on U.S. dollar-denominated instruments at the same time that the risk associated with those instruments increased. I note that in the period 1967 to 1972, the circumstance was the same and the market didn't care. But after five years when the market did care, it cared in earnest. Rick Rule delves into the strategic significance of silver in various industrial applications reinforcing its potential to reach the forecasted price of $1,528 by 2024. He underscores the expanding role of silver in the green energy sector, particularly in solar energy and electric vehicles, EVs, where silver's superior electrical conductivity is irreplaceable. The push towards renewable energy sources and the global transition to electric vehicles are expected to significantly increase the industrial demand for silver, further straining the already tight supply. Furthermore, Rule highlights the importance of silver in the burgeoning field of 5G technology and advanced electronics. As countries around the world roll out 5G networks, the demand for silver, used in various components and conductors, is set to rise. This demand is compounded by the continuous growth in consumer electronics, where silver's properties are essential for performance and reliability. Rule also addresses the potential for new and innovative uses of silver in medical applications and smart textiles emphasizing the metal's antibacterial properties. The ongoing research and development in these areas could open up new markets for silver, contributing to its long-term demand growth. Moreover, Rule discusses the impact of supply constraints on the silver market. He points out that despite the growing industrial demand, silver mine production has been relatively flat, and in some cases, declining due to factors such as ore grade deterioration, geopolitical risks, and regulatory challenges, these supply-side issues, combined with the robust industrial demand, create a perfect storm for a significant price increase. They crash with the market. Gold and silver stocks are stocks. And in a market crash, uh, the tertiary assets, the most marginal assets, decrease the most. And there is no asset in the world more marginal <laughs> than a junior mining share. Stocks are stocks. I remember in the 1987 crash, Gold and gold equities held up for precisely 24 hours, <laughs> and then they followed the market lower. Even gold, 
uh, will be impacted, although gold will come back sooner. What happens in a crash is that the sell decision isn't made by the investor. It's made by the margin clerk. And the margin clerk doesn't care what you think about the relative value of your holdings are. They sell whatever has a bid to extinguish the debt to the house. Investors need to understand that in really precipitous declines, liquidity-related cons- uh, declines, there are no safe shelters. The investment categories that hold value recover the fastest, but in the immediate aftermath of a crash, there are no safe shelters. With- Rick Rule emphasizes the vital importance of investor education and the role of due diligence in navigating the silver market, especially as it approaches the projected price surge to $1,000. by 2024. He advises investors to deepen their understanding of the silver market's fundamentals, including the nuances of supply and demand dynamics, geopolitical influences, and the impact of monetary policies. Rule argues that a well-informed investor is better positioned to make strategic decisions and capitalize on the opportunities presented by the silver market's volatility and potential for significant gains. He also highlights the importance of discerning between speculative hype and genuine market trends. Rule cautions investors against being swayed by sensationalist predictions or short-term price movements that may not be reflective of silver's underlying value or long-term trajectory. Instead, he encourages investors to focus on thorough research, including the examination of silver production costs, exploration and development activities, and the financial health of mining companies. Furthermore, Rule discusses the significance of portfolio diversification within the precious metal sector. He suggests that while silver may present a compelling investment opportunity, it should be considered as part of a broader strategy that includes gold and potentially other precious metals. This diversification can help mitigate risks associated with market fluctuations and ensure a more stable investment portfolio over time. Rule also stresses the value of engaging with reputable and knowledgeable industry experts and analysts who can provide insights and guidance tailored to individual investment goals. He recommends leveraging resources such as seminars, uh, webinars, too many and industry people still believe that their government isn't a fraud. The latest developments in the silver market uh, and the broader the sanctions that we landscape. had in place took place over a period of time when the when the American imports of Russian uranium doubled, <laughs> and so we're trying to have sanctions where nobody, at least no voter, gets hurt. But the truth is that sanctions would be fruitless anyway. If we prohibited the import of Russian uranium the Russians would sell it to the Chinese and they sell it to the Indians. And then Australian and Canadian uranium that went to China and and India would be diverted to the United States. This is all theater. Uh, Putin versus Biden is for the consumption of Russian and American voters. (laughs) Nothing more. Now, It makes sense that with increasing demand for uranium, that there be increasing capacity around the re-enrichment and enrichment of uranium. There was a political consensus in the 1990s that blending down Russian and American weapons grade uranium to fuel, which was a very good thing, by the way, would include uh, uh, an increase in Russian capacity for enrichment and re-enrichment and the tacit agreement that the United States would rely on Russian capacity to do that. We've now learned that perhaps that wasn't such a wise idea. And it's likely that enrichment and re-enrichment capacity will be built outside of Russia. But assuming it isn't, uh, what you would see is that uh, fuel that the Russians couldn't sell in Western Europe and the United States would be diverted to emerging markets and the fuel that they now consume consume from primary exports in Kazakhstan, Australia, and Canada would go to fulfill that demand. Rick Rule discusses the strategic importance of timing and patience in investing in the silver market, particularly in anticipation of the projected surge to $1,528 by 2024. He underscores that the silver market, like all commodity markets, is cyclical in nature with periods of significant price volatility. Understanding and respecting these cycles is crucial for investors aiming to maximize their returns while minimizing risks. Rule advises against attempting to time the market precisely, but rather encourages a long-term investment perspective that acknowledges the inevitability of market fluctuations. He emphasizes the value of gradually accumulating positions in silver and silver-related assets during market dips, 
a strategy known as dollar cost averaging. This approach allows investors to benefit from lower average costs over time, mitigating the impact of short-term price volatility. Rule points out that the most successful investors in the precious metals sector are those who exhibit patience, discipline, and a keen awareness of market cycles, rather than those who chase short-term gains based on speculative forecasts. Moreover, Rule highlights the potential for significant gains during the upward phases of the silver market cycle, especially given the strong fundamentals supporting the projected price increase. However, he cautions investors about the psychological challenges of holding on to positions as prices rise, stressing the importance of having a clear exit strategy based on individual financial goals and market analysis. Recognizing when to take profits, rebalance a portfolio, or reinvest in other opportunities is a critical skill that can significantly enhance investment outcomes. Rule also advises staying informed about global economic trends, industry developments, and geopolitical events that could influence the silver market. He suggests that being proactive in seeking information and continuously updating one's investment thesis are key components of successful investing in a dynamic market like silver. I think it depends on the vault. Uh, I think a bigger risk that people face in a bull market, a bigger risk than confiscation, is entrusting gold and silver to marginal vaults. Uh, if you're going to put money in a vault, make sure that the vault is controlled by a public company where you can see their balance sheet and their income statement. Make sure that the vault is subject to an outside audit every 90 days. It is so easy for the government to steal from you via taxation, via regulation, via inflation, via quantitative easing, that they have no need to steal your bullion. Uh, a tax increase or an excise tax <laughs> or printing up $2 trillion out of thin air is a kind of theft which is absolutely legal and, by the way, is always applauded by the voters. Why would Congress subject themselves to the ire of a populace that has 400 million guns in private holdings when they could steal much more very easily in a way that's very popular. Rick Rule delves into the concept of risk management in the context of the silver market, especially pertinent as investors prepare for the potential surge to $1,528 by 2024. He stresses that while the prospects for silver are compelling, no investment comes without risk. Understanding and actively managing these risks are paramount to preserving capital and achieving sustainable returns. Rule advises investors to consider a range of risk factors specific to silver including market volatility, geopolitical tensions, and regulatory changes that could impact mining operations and silver supply. He also points out the risk of overexposure to a single asset class and recommends diversification within the precious metal sector and beyond as a means to mitigate these risks. Furthermore, Rule underscores the importance of quality and investment selection, particularly when it comes to mining companies. Not all silver mining companies are created equal and focusing on those with strong management teams, robust balance sheets, and high-quality assets is crucial. He suggests that due diligence on these companies, including analysis of their cost of production, reserve bases, and exploration potential, is essential for risk management. Rule also discusses the importance of position sizing and liquidity management. He cautions against allocating too large a portion of one's investment portfolio to silver or silver-related assets, which could lead to significant losses in the event of a market downturn. Similarly, maintaining sufficient liquidity ensures that investors can meet their short-term financial needs without being forced to sell assets at an opportune time. I was able to do it in the 80s and 90s by buying private water rights when they were abundant and easy to buy, particularly in California and Texas. But what happens is that most of the private water rights that were available to be sold have been sold. <laughs> and they're not going to come on the market until the death of people like me uh, or periods of very high water prices. There are uh, a couple of agricultural companies that have control of large water rights. They are, and this is a horrible pun, despite the fact that their water stock's very illiquid. Uh, one is J.G. Boswell, uh, the largest grower of tomatoes and cotton in California, and the holders of truly spectacular, although undescribed, water rights. The other is a small grower and real estate developer in Santa Paula, California, called Limonera. I would caution people listening to this that the primary driver of the market capitalization of both companies 
are actually crop yields in real estate rather than water and need to own these for the very, very long term. I have in both cases. I would also caution people that these stocks are extremely illiquid. Uh, and so don't rush into them. If you want to buy them, study them first and use good till cancel limit. Rick Rule consolidates his analysis by reiterating the significant opportunity presented by the anticipated silver price surge to $1,528 by 2024, while emphasizing the need for strategic planning and execution. He draws upon the comprehensive factors previously discussed, ranging from macroeconomic conditions, supply constraints, and technological advancements, to investor psychology and risk management, to provide a holistic view of the silver market's potential. Rule stresses the importance of an integrated approach to investing in silver, one that combines a deep understanding of the market's fundamentals with a disciplined investment strategy. He encourages investors to stay informed, remain adaptable, and be vigilant in monitoring market developments and adjusting their positions as necessary. Furthermore, Rule advises investors to maintain a clear focus on their long-term financial goals and to use the silver market's volatility to their advantage rather than being swayed by short-term fluctuations. He underscores the value of patience and resilience, reminding investors that significant returns are often realized over time through careful planning and steadfast execution. Rule also highlights the role of silver as part of a diversified investment portfolio. He suggests that silver should not be viewed in isolation, but as a component of a broader investment strategy that considers various asset classes and aligns with the investor's risk tolerance, financial objectives, and market outlook. If you enjoy this video, then you will definitely enjoy this one. Make sure to subscribe before you go and remember this video is not investment advice and should only be used for entertainment.